from faith to rest so we all begin our journey believing in god right we believe in god but i believe maturity is having the faith of god right our journey starts from faith in god to faith of god and the wonderful example of this is uh, if you see a lioness right when a lioness has her cubs there's a certain time when she hunts and she brings the food to the cubs but then she starts teaching the cubs so that the cubs can hunt for themselves right and if you think about our lives if you think about your lives your journey with god initially everything seems so easy seems so seamless right you believed in god for some financial you know some financial need and it happened immediately you believed in god for healing it happened immediately but then slowly slowly it just seems like it's getting difficult why why is that why is that is because god wants you to be mature he wants you to move from faith in god to operate from faith of god okay because you remember what jesus said if you have seen me you've seen the father and i think that's the biggest privilege that we have that if you have seen me you have seen the father you know i'm not just believing in christ for this i am operating on the faith of god that's maturity okay so i just want to show you one scripture portion and i'll keep it very short if you have your bible just turn with me to hebrews chapter 12 verse 5 to verse 8 hebrews 12 was 5 to was 8 and have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons my son do not regard lightly the discipline of the lord nor be weary when reproved by him for the lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives it is for discipline that you have to endure God is treating you as sons for what son is there whom his father does not discipline if you are left without discipline in which all have participated then you are illegitimate children and not sons the author of hebrews is saying hey guys if you have been addressed as sons not talking about babies if you have been addressed as sons as mature sons that means your father is going to discipline you not out of hatred or not out of you know the whole idea of righteous anger or punishment but out of love he disciplines us i'm just saying think about what this means he disciplines us he does not cause suffering but he can use suffering to teach us something right that's why romans 828 says in everything all things come together for good to those who love him so even though he is not really behind the bad things but he can use the bad things to bring out the good in us why because he's working in us he's conforming us to the image of his son but what i want to really focus your attention in this verse is where it says that if you are not disciplined you are illegitimate children right what is the difference between an illegitimate children and a legitimate child what's the difference what's the difference between illegitimate and legitimate the difference is you're all children whether you're illegitimate or legitimate you're all children but the legitimate child gets the inheritance do you see that the legitimate child gets the inheritance inheritance of who the father so whatever the father has okay you partake in that inheritance because you are a legitimate child and that's what maturity is all about maturity see salvation is not just about that prodigal son coming back home and you know crying his heart out and just being accepted in the family that's not salvation salvation is staying in the family and walking in the authority of the father walking in his inheritance that is what salvation is and the author is saying hey guys if you are being disciplined know you are being disciplined because you have an inheritance you have an inheritance and you know i'm i can tell you that 
it's very easy to say but it's very difficult to walk that journey when you're really being disciplined by the father right because there's so much shaking that happens inside of us so much and the reason why there's so much shaking that is happening is so that the things that are shaking were meant to be shaken so that they can fall off from us right because anything of the kingdom cannot be shaken so if there's anything that is shaking in your hearts it could be your belief system it could be you know relationships anything that is shaking in your heart it's good because it was meant to be shaken right you know when i was growing up we had this fear oh i should not listen to that i should not listen to that philosophy i should not listen to that thought process i should not listen to that person this fear what if we might get deceived and you know recently i read this quote which said if you are afraid of being deceived that means you're most likely deceived you're already deceived because think about it if you know the truth if you're standing on the truth it doesn't matter what you're listening to so whatever is shaking our hearts you know especially whatever is shaking our core belief which we have hold, which we held really closely if it is really being shaken that means that's daddy's way of disciplining us so that the shaking things can just fall away i think most of us it happens through circumstances right through different circumstances the god really shakes our hearts and it's extremely painful but i am saying considering that he is a good father that even in this shaking even in the circumstances he can reveal his goodness he's changing us he's transforming us he's taking from glory to glory to say that i will rest in the goodness of the father i don't know what lies ahead there's so much of unknown right there's so much of unknown i don't see but i will still believe in the goodness of the father right so i just want to remind you that point that we are being disciplined why because we are legitimate children because we have an inheritance that's why we are disciplined okay now the question is how do we apply how do we apply this in our day to day lives right now how many of you when you suddenly go through a circumstance you have a reflex action everybody has a you know way of coping my way of coping is panicking okay something goes wrong i want to panic and i want to blame somebody so betty is my scapegoat you know i can blame her for everything so when we are going through these circumstances and you know things start shaking right how we can apply is not to stay in that feeling for long it's okay to be angry it's okay to get disappointed it's okay to feel sad it's okay uh, to be depressed it's okay it's okay to feel that but the question is how long do i want to remain here that's the question so if you can answer that question you know how long do i want to remain here and and the thing is most of us there are certain aspects of our lives that you know certain traumas of our life that we haven't dealt with and we have remained in there for so long that it has turned from bitterness into becoming a personality trait it has become an identity a part of us so it's okay to feel this way it's okay to feel anger it's okay to feel disappointed it's okay to you know feel like killing the other person it's okay right but the question is how long are you going to stay there and the only way not to stay there long is to actively believe in the goodness of the father and i'm saying especially when somebody has done us wrong it's the hardest thing because our default thing is why should i do anything about it he has done something wrong he or she should apologize and we especially when you feel betrayed in that sense to believe in the goodness of the father so that you can you know get out of that program get out of that system of feeling bitter or feeling traumatized that's how we apply i just i just want to share a small story last week somebody whom i knew when i was a child you know he passed away and it was very difficult for me to just process that information okay like he passed away he's no more 
uh, now I cannot reach out to him. You know, it was it was difficult. And that same very day, I was talking to my business partner, and we realized that there might be a crisis, most likely, that can come in our company. Okay, it hasn't happened yet, but most likely it can come. And you know, when we think about crisis that is most likely to happen, we are already living there. <laughs> Even if the crisis has not happened, we are already living there in the crisis, right? And I'm thinking of all the possible worst case scenario, all. And I think we, all of us do that. We think of all the possible worst case scenario. And I'm saying, especially for people like Isaac and me who are like overthinkers, like, man, we've thought of worst, worst, worst case scenarios that cannot even possibly happen also, right? But the question is, how long do we want to stay there? That's the that's question. That's the question. How long do we want to stay there? And you know, last week I was telling you, you know, an Air Force pilot is taught on how to, um, <coughs> the Air Force pilots are trained if in case they jump out of the airplane and are in enemy grounds on how to calm themselves. And one of the training that they do is breathing exercises. Just breathe, drink water, breathe, drink water. And I think one thing that we can do when we are going through certain, these circumstances, it seems very simple, is just to breathe. Take deep breath. Take deep breath just to pause, pause from the circumstances that is hitting you. To take deep breath, to pause and to acknowledge that you have a good father. Just, just to acknowledge that he's a good father, okay? He's still on the throne. You're still on the throne with him. And this is not done yet. This is not the final say. The problem is we've quickly made a conclusion out of it based on things that may or may not have happened, right? So the application is not to stay in the feeling for long by just pause, taking a pause, pausing from that circumstances by taking deep breath exercise, okay? So do with me right now. We'll just exercise and we'll finish this, okay? So just take a deep breath, just take a deep breath. As you're breathing, recognize that this simple breath that you are breathing is from God. And then this simple breath, you know, his presence is there with you. You know, when God made Adam alive, he breathed into him. This breath that you're breathing is his spirit, is his breath. So as you breathe, just acknowledge him. Just acknowledge him and acknowledge his presence all around you, inside of you, around you. And just surrender to him. Forget about the circumstances, forget the thoughts. Just let go, let go. And get conscious of his presence. Come on, couple more deep breaths. If you're still distracted, just focus on your breathing. And as you're focused on your breathing, just remember that this is God's breath in you. Let his presence intoxicate you. Let his presence be the only thing that you have in your mind right now. That everything feels so blurred in his presence. He is good. And start thanking him in faith. Just say, Daddy, you are good. I know that you are here. I know that you love me. I know that you are mindful of me. I know that you're concerned about me. Every little thing that matters to me matters to you. Every little thing. Just take another deep breath and just say, thank you, Jesus. I breathe in you. Thank you, Daddy. Daddy, we just want to acknowledge this great privilege that we have that most times we take for granted that we are your children that we are your children that in spite of our actions behavior thoughts feelings you love us unconditionally you love us I just want to ride in your intimacy. We want to ride in your love for us. Thank you, Daddy. We just rest in your goodness.
that we don't know what tomorrow awaits for us but we know that you are good and because you are good daddy we say with an expectant heart what next what next bring it on daddy bring it on if there are things that are shaking in my life come on daddy bring it on because i am going to trust in the goodness in the goodness of your heart i am going to trust in you i believe in you father we surrender we let go of our stress we let go of the things that are binding us today we take authority we take charge of our lives and we say that i choose to believe in the goodness of my father in spite of what i'm seeing and what i'm hearing i choose to believe in the goodness of my father that he is good thank you daddy we surrender in jesus name we pray amen amen